Hi, welcome to an Oslo tutorial. In this uh, specific tutorial, we're going to work on an end-to-end -end problem. There's actually three videos that go along with this, and what we'll end up with is uh, a, a doublet, and we're starting from, from scratch. So the first video, we're going to cover this core checklist, and we're going to do step A, which is setting up a lens starting point. The second step, we will actually do some optimization and end up with a spherical solution. And then in step C, I'll show a few uh, handy uh, tips and tricks, kinds of things, a little bit more advanced information. And then we'll just add an eighth sphere and make the, the, the doublet a little bit better. So the goal here is to go through what I consider to be kind of a core checklist of starting from scratch and ending up where you can optimize. So you enter lens system data, things that define the light beam in particular. You then enter lens data, which these are a starting point of what glasses you might be starting with, uh, unless you're going to optimize over glasses. In this case, we'll just pick some glasses. We will also start with some uh, predefined curvatures and a focal length, that kind of information for the lens. The focal length, of course, is a calculated quantity. Then we will define the variables that we're going to optimize with respect to and then define a merit function. So if you start any problem from scratch, you might start with patent data or a previous design. You might be entering some data or changing some data around, but you're definitely going to be defining variables and defining the merit function. It's also typical in design problems that that is not a static thing. You, it might change as you're going through different stages in the design process. But these are essentially uh, a core checklist of what you do to start a lens from scratch and then end up doing optimization. This video also comes with um, five documents. It comes with uh, a document that has this tutorial in it so you can follow along and stop the video and, and punch in the numbers yourself or just do the that tutorial yourself on your own. This other information that's included are a set of, of uh, files that are different points in this process that we have where I've already um, essentially solved the problem up to a, a certain point. So you can just start at that if you, at those points, if you want to just do part of the work or if you, you know, make a mistake and don't exactly want to want to figure out what you did. So we've got those for you for convenience. So let's get going. So step A is to take a lens, start a new lens, and I'm going to name it Example doublet basic. I always notice that my typing is extremely bad when I do this uh, type of exercise. So bear with me if I'm making some typos as we go along. So the number of surfaces I'm going to do is four and I'm going to make it a custom lens. So what this does is this opens the lens spreadsheet editor and now I've got a number of rows open. This is one way to quickly get that sort of blank canvas ready to go. So if the Surface Spreadsheet Editor has opened, like mine, you don't have to open it. If not, make sure to come up here and uh, click this button up here to open it, this blue lens button. And there's a few other ways to do that that I cover in other videos. I like to have lens names. So here I'm going to put doublet setup example is what I'm typing in under the lens name. Now, one thing I also like to do is right now in this lens, I don't actually have my name specified. So let's go ahead and put my name in here. I hit the green check and that accepts it. At this point and in another video, I go through this green check mark a lot. I wanted to go ahead and save that information uh, or temporarily stored, I should say, by hitting the green check mark. So please watch the check mark video if you need to uh, get used to that part of the interface. But the red X will get rid of any changes that you've made since you last opened the spreadsheet and the green check accepts them. So you'll be seeing me hit the green check quite a bit here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start concerning myself with different uh, optics parameters. So we start with the entrance beam radius. Now right now if I go to this setup button, this is actually a, different, a bunch of uh, different paraxial properties that you can you can set. The entrance beam radius is the one that's right in the spreadsheet, the one spreadsheet editor at the top level and the field angle is as well. 
So I can just enter 15 in here. Note that these are grayed out right now. And the reason is a lot of these are calculated quantities and you actually need some lens power to get the beam defined correctly. Um, and in other case, for some of them, and then in other cases, we have an object that's at infinity. And so it doesn't really want to let you define it with, uh, with, with all the different parameters. So sometimes you'll see them grayed out and sometimes not. It just depends on the state. But well, we're going to use the entrance beam radius of 15 and my speed's going to be essentially set by the focal length because remember that it's the focal length divided by the, the diameter of the lens is the F number, the infinity F number. So entrance beam radius of 15 millimeters and now I set a field angle of 1 and that's in degrees. That's how I have my uh, unit set up. The next thing we do, so now this is step number 7. Step number five was entering the entrance beam radius and step number six was setting the field angle. Next, I'm gonna worry about my wavelengths. So I hit the wavelength button here. Let me just show you that again. I hit this wavelength button and I have D, F, and C spectral lines defined already and they're all equally weighted and I'm okay with that. So we're gonna we're gonna just accept those those numbers. Um, the object distance needs to be set to infinity. Here it's at 1e to the 20, so it should be greater than 1e to the 8. This is step 8. The object is in air, and the first surface is the aperture stop at the moment, and that's what this a means here, is that this is set to be the aperture stop. So the first surface is set to be the aperture stop, which is what I want. So now uh, step 9 is to go in and actually enter some data. So surface two, I'm going to set a radius of 69. And this is how I tend to do this. You can go either, you can certainly go across or you can go down. I like to go down um, on the, in the spreadsheet like this. So it's minus 69, minus 40, and minus 130 for surfaces two, three, and four. So that just sets the radius of radii of curvature. The thickness here is 7, the thickness here is 3. Remember these are the thicknesses or the distances after the surface. This will actually be one where I set a solve. So I put here a solve for the axial ray height and I want it to be 0. What this does is this essentially sets the uh, this location to be where the paraxial image location is for the system. And what I typically do is I will use any defocus from there will be this last uh, button. Not all design codes traditionally have allowed you to alter that last uh, airspace, but Oslo does allow you to do that. So that's the typical way to uh, go about that refocus. And I'll show a little bit about that later as well. So that is uh, step number nine. So at this point, it makes a lot of sense to accept and then actually save the lens. Oh, look, see, I've already made a small boo-boo. I haven't actually entered the glasses yet, so this wouldn't actually work. So step nine also had you enter two glasses in here. Now, it's very important to get these on the correct surface. This I've set to be a stop that can actually float away from the first surface. So here I'm going to use BK7. Perhaps we should use NBK7 now instead for green glasses, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and use BK7 and SF2, traditional leaded glass formulas. These are from SHOT. And I can just enter them in. You can also come here to the catalog and actually go to the SHOT catalog, and you would dig through here and find it. But if you know the name of it, you can actually get it. And it may, actually BK7 may be under the obsolete catalog. So anyway, I knew the names of them, so I could just type them in. But if you don't know the name or you're looking for a glass, you can also use this button for the glass catalogs. So now I'll go and I'll save the lens file. So this is the end of step nine in the tutorial. And so the next set of steps is to go ahead and just check to see what we have. So here's how the lens looks right now. And I've got an example, uh, a picture of it in the tutorial notes file. So this does indeed look correct. One other thing that's good to do 
is to check the numerical data. So if I hit this Len button, you can see and do a quick check and make sure that everything matches. One nice way to check it is to look at this number here, 105.208319. That matches what I have in the tutorial text. So it looks like I've got the correct lens entered here. And then we can do refractive index. This just tells us BK7 and SF2. Oh, look right here. It says obsolete 001 is where the glass catalog that uh, BK7 is in. Now SF2 is still in the shot catalog according to this this database. And then the last thing I, I like to do is I like to also check the wavelengths just to be sure sometimes I've got it set up right. So these are all good good steps to do. Another thing to do is to check some paraxial constants. So some of the paraxial constants have been calculated based on the uh, data that's been entered for the lens itself. So if we look here we've got 109.872 We've got 2.61826, 150.32801. This looks really good. This is uh, what we expect from this. So this is a lens uh, doublet setup example. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this file. I like to save them by after hitting the green check mark in particular. So this was the first step in this three video series. In the next video, we will set up an, uh, variables and error function, and we will actually optimize. So this was the basic setup. Thanks.